Hello, I'm Nevenka Kopriushek. I'm the director of Bunker Productions and uh, happy to share some stuff with you. Hello, I'm Maya Vizin. I'm executive producer. I work in Bunker and I'm in charge for Inside Bunker for ACT uh, project. Okay, so Lokomotiva has asked us to share some thoughts with you and Maya, I will ask you first question. What is your take on culture of solidarity in these times of COVID-19 and how can we produce it? Uh, well, uh, solidarity is one of the buzzwords of Corona crisis. Uh, we witnessed many nice examples of solidarity among people during these difficult times from, I don't know, people helping their elderly neighbors with groceries, or sewing masks uh, or renting the flats to health workers for free. I think the examples were numerous. Uh, the solidarity is of course necessary, but uh, I think in these times also it became an abused word uh, in the hands of right wing, which came to power just before the corona hit Slovenia. It became one uh, on one hand an a, sub a substitute for systemic help and social state. Uh, and we really have to be careful with this because solidarity is perceived as a one-time crisis manager measure to relieve the consequences of the crisis. Uh, but what we really need is not uh, solidarity, but the remodeling of power structures and permanent change of imbalances. Uh, we have to be aware that COVID is just a symptom, not the cause of injustices. So, uh, so we must treat it as such. Uh, we have to relieve the symptoms and go to the root of the disease. Coronly, corona only deepened the chasm between rich and poor and west and uh, south and uh, I mean east and west and north and south. We have to know that although it may seem so, we are not on the same boat. And even though the solidarity is necessary, uh, it is not the right answer. Uh, so next question is for you, Nevenka. What knowledge are we producing in culture and art now, and how should we produce and distribute knowledge? Okay, so knowledge is produced constantly. The problem of knowledge is culture and the arts is that it is not validated as such. But let me maybe share you something else with you, that in Slovenia, the, the, the COVID crisis has, uh, has collided with another crisis, which is more political. In fact, we changed the government literally the same day from the central <coughs> left to change into quite far right. Uh, and uh, so we are witnessing uh, quite a big change, which is for us a little bit more scary than the COVID. And as, um, as in this kind of crisis, we are all producing guerrilla tactics and learning how to use them. And uh, this is something we would really like. It is very specific here in Slovenia and we would like to share some pictures with you with few comments. And now we will be sharing the screen with you. Yeah. So as you see, uh, this is the picture that uh, kind of moved me along because it's one of the first, it is protester zero. It's one lady standing all alone in front of the parliament. She is from kind of small enterprises uh, field. Uh, and she's protesting all alone in front of the parliament while the while the, it was the lockdown was really severe it was quite at the beginning the next one was balcony so balcony protests which was as you see uh, uh, everybody would put something on the balcony and we were sharing things over the social media and I quite like the, 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 this, this one, which is about solidarity is a vaccine. And um, 
I find that all these protests which were happening and I will be developing in further uh, has, uh, has a very deep meaning because the, the public space has literally shrinked. We have all stayed in our uh, respected apartments, rooms and not only public space but entire public domain which means that all the media were full of uh, politics, COVID and um, and um, and new measurements which which then the, the 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 population or at least some of them has been definitely against so let me share from the balconies still something moved more this is the front of the parliament and here I would like to express the feeling that all these protests in Slovenia are very arty and are very uh, theatrical. As you see these crosses uh, on the floor, it is something that you mark usually in the theater when you want to put somebody in the light. And it's, it, the message is very clear that we will be back again on the streets despite the measures. Next, so these are, these are processes which are happening every Friday. Huh? So this is, I think, the third Friday, which is a bit, people were, we were still in lockdown and people were putting the shapes of the, of the foot on the pavement. And this one says literally upor, which means resistance. With, with uh, this, on the footsteps, there were uh, messages and already you can see the, the police are there observing that. And here, mind just a little break that life is like riding a bicycle. In order to keep your balance, you must keep moving. Maybe people were inspired by Albert Einstein. So the, the, from the balconies, the protests moved on the bikes. So in every city of, Ljubljana, of Slovenia, mostly in Ljubljana, the bigger ones in Ljubljana, people started to, to ride bicycle every Friday at seven o'clock. With different, uh, with different messages, mainly against corruption, against uh, police state, and uh, and for and uh, the the solidarity. So this is getting bigger and bigger every Friday. So here there are already three, three five, three thousand five hundred peddlers. Here is also some known faces. I would say the girls' power. I call it. Some you might recognize. And actually people are getting, gathering more and more. The streets are full in front of the parliament and also in Maribor in, and in other smaller cities. As you can see, the atmosphere is also always somehow cheerful. It is not only that the, the lockdown is still happening, so the, but also it's something, it has this, this shared feeling of kind of being alone, but then somehow you share frustration with others is in a way very powerful. So this is very beautiful picture uh, from the top. And then comes a moment that um, more and more from bikes now to the feet, the lockdown is a little bit different now. And uh, then it's what happens, the government gets a bit scared apparently, and they start to, to gate the, the space in front of the parliament. And as you see, um, the half of this square in front of the parliament is now gated with the police. But already during the afternoon, some are some people uh, squeezed into this place and wrote Nasha Last, which means our proper property. And our property is guarded by Robocops. And this is actually, you can see it even from higher, it's so even more clear which doesn't uh, stop people to strike and even have fun. Uh, it's very collective from young to old. This is just a little intermezzo to, to mention that uh, bikes were also sort of symbol of liberation, also of women. These are suffragettes, I think, in Manchester. And that not only people were protesting against the, the parliament, but also for things like for nature and environment, because the government excluded uh, NGOs from decision making, especially on environmental issues. So, this is one of the very strong messages of the strikers. Uh, it can be very individual again, like plant matters, plants matters. 
it can be children sharing that they, they really need to, we talk about future to really elderly people who are rolling other kind of bikes let's say uh, and even this uh, then another week it was people writing messages on the on the floor like this lady is, is writing she wants freedom and um, at the same time, this, these were strikes have going on every Friday. At the same time, there were another strikes which are happening mainly in front of the Ministry of Culture and were very dramatical, like people laying on the street or people watching the ministry with no shows going on, let's say, to people bringing the messages of all the bureaucratic messages and to also all or to leave their props literally get naked until the skin and the, the response of the ministry is such like everything is all right there is no problem for culture mm -hmm. but culture will always exist either with bicycles or not this is i think banksy picture which i kind of like and there are also very still solo solo actions going on this is so there are also artists there are two puppeteers who reacted on government uh, initiative to, 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 to bring homage uh, to, to medical workers by flying with NATO and Slovene army airplanes over the city. And so this too has written clearly no fly zone here. So, and another one, this is very recent one, is about, again, now, now the, the space in front of the parla parliament is completely gated by the police every Friday. And some artists and uh, intellectuals, professors squeezed again, they, they, they occupied the public space in front of the parliament by reading Slovene constitution. And you can see how, how how um, scary this can be <laughs> or who is listening but it can finish and um, they're still reading the you can see robocops and the artists in front of it and as maya wrote here who is afraid here and uh, but this uh, this events finished like that the, all these artists are getting fines uh, for uh, express Mainly they are, what they are reading is the, 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 the right of gathering and the right, the right of public space and right of public expression. Here also, maybe I can mention the, another act of solidarity is one lawyer who is uh, giving uh, his uh, expertise uh, and, um, and his help with uh, writing um, writing notes against those uh, fines they are getting exactly and maybe just to share some one of one of the last thing because this is going on there there are strikes on friday and they're very theatrical so i think that the, the art gets some sort of another meaning or another position in the in the moments like that and this is not just slovenian but all around europe the fascism is raising and the gaps are bigger and bigger between people but yesterday there was uh, just to show you a little bit how these uh, tensions are in fact raising and the Slovenia is really splitting in different parts and to yesterday we had national celebration day which was so you can see pictures how politicians were celebrating not all of them just mainly right-wing ones um, in and all the center was completely gated as you can see that a lot of robocops all around the city you could not enter the center part but just a few hundred meters away there was another sort of celebration going on and i call this people's national day and where, where everybody was expressing their wish nevertheless on one part of this square there are also nazis who were against this celebration so it's really very complex and complicated but in anyhow there is a huge reclaim of public space and public domain going on these days in slovenia so this is one of the beautiful images from yesterday and one of the the posters it's borderless solidarity against repression against militarism 
and one of the act uh, maybe uh, quotation from Rebecca Solnit, it's important to say what hope is not because we all think about future and how we will survive and what is hope or not. It is not the belief that everything was or will be fine. The evidence was all around us of tremendous suffering and tremendous destruction. The hope I'm interested in is a, about broad perspective with specific possibilities, ones that invite or demand that we act. So this is a little, I think this is somehow the message of the, this protest. And maybe just one last thing is that the, they are not just left-wing left people or not just young or old ones protesting. Actually, it's, it's, it has been accumulating since this neoliberal system has been, I think, accumulated this frustration in people and in this time, everything burst it out. So let's continue with the okay. third question. Uh, yeah. What have we learned from the crisis? Can we develop different post-crisis modes and conditions of art and cultural production, which will allow basic sustainability and reduce the precarious position of cultural workers, workers and artists? So I think that it's almost impossible to predict the future because we are living this transition very literally right now. But in Bunker, we start, we at least try to think about all those precarious artists who are around us. And we just said, let's do something very concretely. And so we, you know, we have invited some of the artists and, and invested in them. Just we, we gave, gave, gave them some small salary just to develop an idea because we think that thinking is already a value and art is a value which needs to be supported and produced as well. And that uh, that so we we start we 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 started this action and maybe Maya, you explain a little bit further. Yes, we have commissioned 11 artists, mostly from performing arts and of younger generations and some self-employed to produce basically just a project proposal. Uh, we didn't promise them to produce their work, uh, but as Nevenka already said, just paying for the proposal and their thoughts is actually quite unique in our milieu and in our country. Uh, we were quite surprised with the outcome. Almost all projects were really, really good. Uh, a lot of them, of course, touched the, the times we live in uh, and the times that the project proposal were developed. Uh, from researching conspiracy theories, importance of the touch in the time that we are not allowed to touch each other, importance of breathing as well, empowering the unprivileged and giving them voices, while some were more personal and develop, developing their personal stories within the quarantine time. Uh, we have decided to produce three of them already in the frame of our festival Mladi Levi this August. Uh, and two of them we will de develop further and produce on some other occasion uh, in autumn or next year. And for the rest, we are looking for either co-producers or some other producers because they are uh, either too big for us or demand some further development. Mm -hmm. so, uh, maybe if I can just add that, that actually the, this, uh, this, this time has also changed us as a collective in a way. And we started to curate more, col more collectively than before. Uh, uh, so this is a project somehow of all of us and also when we think now about the festival and, and other things, it came very, it, it, it all came, not, not the idea, oh, now we will change into, let's say, more collective work of uh, ways of producing, but it came really organically, I think, after all those years and this kind of new situation changed us to, to produce sort of differently. Um, and the new question is, does, does the COVID-19 crisis bring forward the idea of social equality, social states, and perhaps universal basic income? And how can this be reflected in culture and arts? Um, I think that Corona crisis highlighted the importance of strong social state 
there are several states proving that, for example, New Zealand, Finland, Iceland. Uh, the public health system and public schools turned out relevant and necessary, even es essential in the fight against pandemics. But unfortunately, our country is uh, in our country, such findings are really short lived. We already see the disintegration of that. And instead of investing in educational system and health system, Slovenia is investing in its military forces and robocops and police forces. And uh, on the other hand, uh, concerning the universal basic income, I think that often the government does not understand what this really is. Uh, they call the support for se self-employed in quarantine time universal basic income, uh, even though this, is, this support wasn't uh, basic nor universal, universal, it was just a support for the loss of income for self-employed who were not able to work at all, so they were not able to create any, uh, any income at all. Uh, and the last question, um, what political and policy approaches you would foresee in your field of work or how it should be changed in future? For example, what the theater has learned from the crisis and what political and policy approaches should be deve developed for its change or how the theater should change in the future. Let's say it is, as I said before, it is very difficult to predict anything because I think we are the, the what can we feel that the crisis will be there and it will be, uh, Nevertheless, it looks like people would like a new reality to be as, pos as possible close to the one we lived before the crisis. Uh, and known from at least our cultural policy, not just this one, but the ones before, they will have, um, we have to, it's a, there is a lack of vision anywhere for culture. The, the, the acknowledgement of the importance of the culture in any, as, not as a value as such, but also as, I don't know, social or economic developer. But the, the I, mean, I don't have high expectations from the policy because the, the, I mean, we are lacking so many visions in every kind of field and culture always is one which comes the last. Now, I think the, so the, every minister is actually starting like from the scratch and uh, most of them are very just interested in into media and uh, appropriation of them. Um, it's very clearly with the television now in Slovenia, which was really uh, bringing very new perspectives in the, in the role of the government and different uh, uh, measures taken in this time. Uh, so I believe that the, that the changes should, should come somehow from the bottom and there are many initiatives now going on, uh, at least around here, with uh, deep rethinking how we function and how to bring uh, more, let's say, democracy in the, in the theater or more theater in democracy, as we've seen before. This is, no man, this is quotation of one of our favorite uh, sociologists, uh, Svetlana Slapshak. She is really quoting some Greek values in this term. And it is actually, everything is really now happening. And so the future, I don't know what we, it will bring, but I think we will all have to, to look deep uh, into the way we function, and in the way we produce and function together, and that the solidarity doesn't become as an empty word, but you really should get out more of our own bubble. And um, I think that in, in theater or in arts in general or in culture, we are too often just self-referential. And so it lacks so some sort of connection with the rest of the world with, and with, the, with other layers of society. So I think we will have to work together to have, to, uh, to have this really still, to, to, to protect the values which Europe is based on, which is, of course, the, right, the human rights, solidarity, and access of culture, education, health system for everybody. I think that this is the biggest task actually to keep 
those values, which is not really the case in many of our countries. So cultural policy needs is just again one of the one of the segments and uh, we will we will need a lot of discussion and to, to and um, testing and experimenting to find the system which will which will allow us the development of it in on a more solid basis let's say so i think we are done <laughs> and thank you very much come visit yeah. us and share share stuff with us <laughs>